So just to give you some background information, uh, South Sudan is located in East Africa, it's landlocked, uh, bordered by those countries, Uganda, Kenya, Ethiopia, South Sudan, DR Congo and the Central African Republic. Uh, it's a very young country, it's only eight years uh, independent, and uh, for most of the time when they were under Sudan, um, the, the level of social services w w was low and it remains low because of uh, the conflict which has gone on since 2013. So there has not been a lot, a lot any significant investment in, in, in social services. Most of the investments have gone towards, um, uh, especially from the government side, towards um, defense. And uh, most of the resources that have come in have been humanitarian, so development funding, which would actually be required to make any progress on WASH, has been very, very insignificant. And uh, as a result, because of the protracted crisis, we have a lot of food insecurity. Over half of the population is insecure. Pe populations don't stay long enough in a place to, to produce food. And uh, we have many people who are displaced uh, in, in camps. So in terms of uh, efforts towards uh, containing cholera, um, they, they've really been uh, well organized, but largely uh, the task force at the national level is predominantly constituted by humanitarian partners, as, as you may expect in any humanitarian country. But we still have uh, government participation Largely, uh, the task force is chaired by the ministry, but you don't get uh, significant involvement from the other line ministries. Um, we have a draft a national cholera control plan that we are working on, and uh, we've been implementing uh, uh, preventive uh, OCV campaigns uh, since 2017. Uh, we managed to, to deploy 2.1 million doses uh, between 2017 and the end of, end of last year. And then uh, at the close of last month, we had an approval for another 2.9 million doses uh, to be deployed in the cholera hotspots. Um, so as I mentioned, uh, we, we have challenges, especially uh, participation from the other sectors uh, in, in cholera control activities and uh, also the involvement of, of the other counterparts from the WASH uh, section, especially when we are doing the OCVs also, uh, is still a bit of a challenge. And uh, I think we are getting, we are trying to get, uh, get them engaged uh, as part of the process to develop the National Cholera Control Plan. We're engaging uh, a, a WASH consultant who will help us to engage the WASH actors um, to, to, to get uh, the gaps defined and therefore to also tailor the, the, the interventions uh, in the National Corridor Control Plan uh, to make an impact in terms of uh, the changes that we want to see to control cholera in South Sudan. So in terms of, of, of the burden, the country clearly is, uh, is endemic. I should have mentioned that uh, uh, when you look at the GMP report uh, for 2017 by WHO and UNICEF, um, basic access to safe water is estimated at 50%, uh, 48% rural, and 60% uh, urban. Basic use of uh, uh, improved sanitation is only 10%, 6% um, rural, and 28% uh, urban. Open defecation is 61%. So um, clearly, the country is endemic uh, for cholera based on those, those indicators, but it's not surprising uh, given the, the, the context I just shared. So um, we have had outbreaks since 2014. 14 every year up to 2017. And we've uh, registered uh, during that period uh, over 28,000 cases and uh, over 600 deaths. But of course, 
given the, the, the big, the, the, the overall vulnerability of the, of the country, because given that picture, there is, uh, that means the whole country is vulnerable. You can have an outbreak in any part of the country. But even then, we still see patterns. And uh, I think these are driven by other factors. The, those other contextual factors, and uh, it, I think it varies from context to context. But what we seem to see uh, in South Sudan is that uh, during this period, all these outbreaks have started in, uh, in Juba, which is the capital city. So maybe it's the point of, uh, of, of introduction of the new outbreaks. And uh, most of the time what we see is when it's introduced in Juba, it spreads along, along the big rivers, as, as you saw in the, in the old days of, uh, of John Snow, uh, along river, river Thames. So I think uh, river, river Nile for us here is our River Thames. So you see that pattern of uh, cases along, along River Nile. Yes, and, uh, and then along the commercial hubs, uh, because these are the places that people go to uh, for trade. Um, and then due to the humanitarian context, we also see cases in the, in the IDPs. And uh, when we had a very long outbreak, we had a trend where the outbreaks now moved very deep into the rural areas to affect uh, the cattle camps. And there we had very explosive outbreaks because one, the education level is very low. And then uh, the hy hygiene habits are very poor. Sanitation is almost 0%. Access to safe water is 0%. And then we also had populations on islands where also there, are, there is almost no social services uh, to talk about. But uh, we had very big populations in some of the islands because during the fighting, islands are considered as safe havens to hide. Usually there isn't a lot of, a lot of war that goes on on the island. So when people run, they tend to run to, to the islands. And then the complication of uh, getting into cholera. Um, so these are some of the trends uh, from, uh, from the period. I tried to note the areas when we had uh, like the highest number of cases uh, reported in any single week. Um, these were in 2014 and uh, 2017. In 2014, the highest number of cases in a week were reported in, uh, in IDPs, especially IDPs where humanitarian response was not, was not optimized. Then in 2017, uh, we had very high number of cases, very high in the week, especially in populations in the very rural areas in the, in the, in the, in the cattle, in the cattle camps. So that's where uh, the explosive outbreaks were reported. And then the longest du duration was in, in uh, the outbreak that started in July, July 2016. It started uh, within the context of, of a crisis that went on up to the end of, end of 2017, lasted 77 weeks. And um, so in fact, when we started this process of hotspot definition, it started within the context of containing this this long outbreak, and there was a lot of confusion, as I as I mentioned, in terms of de defining what a hotspot was, because during then any area which had the cholera was defined as a, as as a hotspot, um, which of course may not fit the definition that we we know now. And uh, the geograph in terms of geographical spread, we had the highest spread in uh, 2017 because of the duration. Uh, but th the good news is that uh, uh, we, last year we never had any confirmed cases and we've had none uh, this year so far. So in terms of, uh, of mapping, this is the, the definition which, uh, uh, which has been used. Um, I'll not go through it again. Um, but we try to use, uh, based on the guidance, we try to use recent data. <coughs> Mapping at district level for us is the county. And uh, 
we, we never used much of the, as you see, the contextual and local capacities factors. Most of what we used was the, the, the data reported uh, from, from the cholera line list, the Minister of Health cholera line list. Uh, that we was put together by the, the, the task force. So using the line list, um, we derived attack rates and the, and the case fatality rates uh, to define the, the hotspots. Yeah, so um, we had, um, we have data for the four years, um, four of the five years, because the fifth year, which should have been 2018, we had no, we had no outbreak. So we, so for each of the years, we calculated the attack rate, which is the cases per, per, per 10,000. Um, for 2014, 15, 16, and 17. So, but it's very clear that he, w when you look over the years, um, I think apart from uh, down here at the bottom is Juba, the capital city, where you see all cases through. Most of the other places, um, there are years when they don't register any, any cases. So it's only it's only this the capital city which registered uh, cases um, during the the, the the entire entire period. So most of the others uh, they are either affected two of the years or only one of the years, uh, as you can see. And. Uh, so, th so therefore, for us, uh, the, the pattern then became very important. Of course, Juba became a, a hotspot, but as I mentioned, the pattern, most of the other areas, like along the Nile, which were affected, but also areas that were along uh, commercial hubs uh, became, became hotspots for us that we targeted for preventive vaccinations. Um, this map shows uh, the distribution by, by attack rates. Uh, we wanted to see w which areas attack rate, no, case fatality rates rather, case fatality rates as a measure of for access to care. So I wanted to be sure also that uh, if there are areas that uh, um, have high attack rates because of uh, low access to social services, they are also prioritized. And clearly, you can see some that stand out. These are this is an area which is an island, and uh, this this actually is not real. This this was a very small small outbreak of less than ten cases, uh, where you had uh, a very high number of a very high number of deaths. Um, so, but some of the other areas that stood out in terms of case fatality rates were the cattle camps, islands. Um, that's where we really had explosive, explosive outbreaks. So, we try to prioritize them um, uh, when we're doing the hotspot, hotspot mapping. So then it comes to this uh, when you put all the data together. So this is our famous river. River Nile, the capital Juba is here. And then you have this major, these are the major trade hubs. Uh, this is at the border with Uganda. So these are the major, major commercial hubs. And then all the counties along, along the Nile, but also looking at the areas with displaced populations and uh, Good enough also many of the cattle camps are along the river because they have pastures throughout the year because of the water. But we also have some cattle camps outside um, 
away from the river. This is the area of the Kapoetas bordering Ethiopia and, and Kenya and Uganda, where we also had uh, very big, big outbreaks. And then uh, this is actually from similar to what was presented by Zimbabwe from uh, the, the, the UNICEF study, which looked at the frequency and duration of, uh, of, of outbreaks. And you note that when you compare the two, you see a convergence um, of, of hotspot areas. Still the same distribution you can still see uh, and, the, and the major hubs because we use the same data set. This is the same, same grouping by frequency and duration of, of, of outbreaks. It comes to the same areas as seen uh, on the map. So in terms of how we used we, we used the data, so most of what we did were to, to, to work with our WASH counterparts to do preventive campaigns. Uh, in March, March, March 2017, we were supported by the GTFCC and John Hopkins uh, when we did the hotspot mapping and developed uh, a comprehensive two-year uh, cholera plan. We secured 2.1 million doses and we started systematically vaccinating uh, these hotspot areas. So in green are uh, the areas where we've done, uh, we've done two, two campaigns. And then in this light, like light brown are the areas, hotspot areas where we've, we've done only one round. And then in the deep red are the ones that are still pending for vaccination, but we have another proof of uh, uh, 2.9 uh, million doses to, to, to complete this work. And hopefully this time it will be with the full participation of our WASH, WASH counterparts. And using, and I think uh, the, this, the, the, the vaccination, preventive vaccination was the main driver for, for containing the outbreaks. Otherwise, most of the underlying risk factors are still, are still prevalent. So I've already alluded to these challenges. Um, the weak social services sector is still a challenge. Uh, very low development funding um, from government and, and the donors. From the donors, it's largely humanitarian, which supports as the software of WASH, distributing um, um, water treatment tablets, um, which does not uh, is which does not take long. It's not sustainable. And then we've I've already alluded to the inadequate integration of WASH, and we want to make sure we get this right as as we finalize our plan, so that we engage them. And also to engage in the other, engage the other sectors, and uh, security is improving. It has improved a lot uh, since the agreement was signed last September. So, and we are hopeful it will continue. So, in terms of the next steps, we are looking at uh, uh, a wash uh, assessment. And I think if you've not if you've not included wash indicators uh, as part of your hotspot mapping, then you'll have to somehow do it to ensure that uh, your plan is addresses the real issues within the hotspots. So we didn't have this included in our hotspot mapping, so that's why we have to do this now uh, to, to, for, to complete the planning. So we want, uh, uh, we're already in discussion with the GTFCC to engage uh, a, a WASH a consultant to have this bit of the work done. So and once that is done, we'll be ready for for reviewing the plan, costing it, and then uh, finally having it uh, launched. It's uh, a quality control plan, not an elimination plan. Um, for and acknowledgements uh, to. Yeah.